three and a half billion years ago, and that other living system. Professor, not only the human beings, but the population of the seas would be so crowded, there would not be room for the entire ecosystem to breathe and to function as a balanced system. That's right. And if we didn't have such a lopsided uh, presentation of data, meaning that the creation and biblical message is hardly ever given a public forum, uh, it wouldn't be so hard to accept by so many. But when you've gone, you're so entrenched with one particular mindset, it's hard to to truly even seriously consider something else. You have on the glasses of, of evolution, as it's said. And that's not really mm -hmm. fair to the student. The student right. is the loser. The professor is teaching what he's mandated mm -hmm. to teach. He may or may not know the data behind the scene mm -hmm. that is being sequestered. But it is the student that uh, is in a context where there's an attempt for him to think rationally and become a mature adult and hopefully a given percentage will become scientists and, and among those mathematicians and logicians and politicians and statesmen to be able to lead us. Mm -hmm. But when they're given faulty data and not even permitted to do a balanced analysis and comparison of the data, that is not fair to the students, and it's not fair to the next generation. That's right. Now, in fairness, uh, there are, there's quite a range of opinion in the evolutionary community of when man, modern man appeared. Some think maybe as recently as 35,000 years ago. Others, uh, Stone Age, 100,000 years ago, or, or whatever their numbers might be. And on a later program, we'll crunch those. Yes. Because an, a calculator has no bias. It just crunches numbers. Yes. And so I think the public deserves to see the two scenarios, which one more likely is, is the accurate one. Yes. And the closing moments of this program, again, we want to emphasize that we pass the age of the dinosaurs. We go to the age of the mammals, according to evolutionary theory, and the introduction of modern man and his various cultural habitats and resources, and each is superior in his own right. Some of the most intelligent people I've ever met in a context have been in third world countries. And I've been in, I've lectured in over 20 countries. You've lectured in a number of countries. And as we are able to see the reflectivity and the response, the intellectual response, given their context, we're not talking about a superior man being white or being black or being uh, uh, Melanesian. We're talking about a human race with the division through the three basic tribes, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, each with superior characteristics. Now, that brings us to a final question. Follow me to the globe, please. Professor Hefner, um, here we have an embracement of propaganda in our generation that we're crowding the globe and using up our resources. Now, I'm in favor of being friendly to planet Earth. It's the habitat in which our Creator placed us, mm -hmm. and we are doing a number of things that are detrimental to planet Earth, and we certainly should be cautious about that. But uh, planet Earth is amazingly resilient and still supports life as we know it, even with a compromised ecosphere. But six and a half billion people, we're, uh, we're taught that we're being overcrowded. Uh, if we were to draw a circle, in which those six and a half billion people could stand. Let's just give them standing room. How much room do we need for them to stand? Well, probably the average person, three square feet. <clears throat> three square feet. That's like waiting in line at a movie theater for a ticket or something. Okay, so we can <clears throat> stand there. Mm -hmm. Or three of tiles, floor tiles. You know, you could easily take a three foot by three foot, that's nine square feet, and put three pretty big people in there. Certainly, and have uh, adjacent people in the So they in would the have an average line. of three square feet, say, standing. So that's practicable. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how large a circle, uh, I've seen students come up mm -hmm. to the board when you were lecturing and, and draw a circle on planet Earth. Let's say we, we want to put them here in the United States and draw a circle. You think they would all much, fit there? Think they would all fit? <laughs> well, there's some student, six and a half billion people, each having room to stand. Would they fit in the United States? I've seen students draw a circle larger than the United States. Then you say, well, uh, not quite. Someone else try. I've seen students draw a circle like this, encompassing maybe the southern states. Well, will you very quickly 
show us what size circle would be needed for every member of the human race, 6.5 billion, to stand shoulder to shoulder? Well, I'll be glad to show you, but I, I have those numbers crunched also on another program, but so maybe they'll tune in to see that program. Let me get my ballpoint pen out and show you the size circle that you could stand the world's population. And then you will justify it on the I'll next program. I'll justify it on the next program. Are you serious? Yes. You the entire human race could stand within that dot. Yes, in a circle that's just under 30 miles in diameter. There's one county in the western state of Texas called Brewster County, mm -hmm. and it encompasses more space than you have required. So essentially the entire human race could stand in one Texas county. Now things are a little larger in Texas, but one state can embrace that and one county of that state. Which brings us to state this. What we have seen is that when you crunch the numbers, they point to the creation model and the creation record and the biblical record. That means that they point to the fact that the Creator sent His Son to die for our sins. He was crucified. He was buried. He rose again the third day. And this moment, that Creator in the flesh, Jesus Christ, is knocking at your heart's door. Would you open your heart and pray this simple prayer? Just pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, Thank you for dying for me, for shedding your blood for my sins. Right now, I open my heart to you. Lord Jesus, right now, step into my heart and live. Cover my sins with your blood, and I will serve you with all my heart. If you prayed that simple prayer, asking Jesus Christ to step within you to be your Savior, you're a child of God. We have heaven as our home. Welcome to the family. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.